Nintendo Switch. Let's see what's going on. The port looks a little worn, but otherwise it's fairly solid. Nothing's loose. The shield is a little bit separated, but, but not overly concerning. However, when we stick power to it, we're getting zero amp draw. And when I stick the USB meter to it, we're only drawing five volts. So this tells me it's not communicating with the NMI 2T36. So we still have a problem somewhere. It could be the port. It could be something in between the port and the NMI 2T36, or it could be the NMI 2T36 itself. We will have to open it up and have to do some testing and see if we can figure it out. This video is brought to you by our friends at PCBWay. They got a special offer for you. I'll tell you about it in a bit. We have to switch apart enough to do some testing. These are going to be the zones we're going to test for your orientation purposes. We'll begin our testing around the N9T-T36. The first capacitor we're going to test is this one here, which is tied to the Pi-3 USB on the other side of the board. The line we do not want shorter to ground is the line going to the chip, and it appears to be fine. Let's check out all the other capacitors surrounding the chip. Same rules apply. So far, so good. This chip is the exception to the rule. It has two lines going to the chip, so one side should be ground. Okay, everything around the chip seems to be fine so far. We're going to move up the board here and test around the MOSFETs. Everything seems to be fine there. Let's check our little filter. On this filter, we want continuity going from the chip to the port, but we don't want continuity going side to side. Looks good. Let's check our invincible fuse and see if it's being invincible. It looks like it not, might not be invincible. We are not getting continuity through the fuse. It looks like we have a blown fuse. Let's check our test pads just to be sure that, that we don't have a short somewhere because there are some burn spots elsewhere. We should not have any pathway to ground on these pads. Let's move over to these pads. We should not have a pathway to ground on either one of them. We do not. Excellent. We should not have a pathway to ground on this coil. We do not. But we should have continuity going from side to side. We do. Same rules apply on this chip as to the m 9 t 36 except several capacitors with multiple lines going to the chip. Everything seems to be fine. Could this just be a blown fuse? We have no shorts to ground. Nothing seems to be blown other than the fuse. So... Let's try replacing the fuse and see if we get any power. For your orientation purposes, we'll be targeting in right here on the fuse on the board located in that area. While I'm setting up my equipment, let me throw in my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the Amazon Associate links in the description. If you head to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, or if you buy anything during that session, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. And I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. This is one of the few repairs you can do with the board still in the housing, as long as you can hand solder it. And now I'm just going to low melt it. So we can get off. It might be the rare occasion where I might pull out the hot tools. I almost always regret doing so. Let's see how it goes today. Let's wake up the low melt. Pico Prince is having a little bit of issue here. There we go. Looks like I need to order more fuses. Only took almost two years to get... Only took almost two years to get through these. I call them invincible for a reason. Stuck on my tweezers just in a way where I can't really get in the solder. I always count on the tweezers to fail me when I need them. Let's just bring in the big boy and see if we can smash it on there. Check and see if we have continuity. We do in that direction. And we do in that direction. Very good. Now let's see if we blow it. PCB Way is assembling your PCB starting at $30 with free shipping and free stencil. Component sourcing and storage, SMT, THT, BGA, all turnkey. And look at all these options. Check out my link in the description of this video and start your project today. Let's stick some power to it and see if we blow the fuse again. 
if it was just a blown fuse. Yeah, we are recognizing the charger. Try the OEM. And as you can see, it's drawing 15 volts. The battery is quite dead, so we'll have to let it charge for a little while, and we'll see if we've fixed our problem with just a fuse. What a rare bird that would be. I hope this video is being helpful to you on your repair journey. Just a reminder, if this is beyond something you want to try yourself, I offer these services. Just head over to micromage.repair, click on free quote, fill out the form, and I'll respond to you personally. We're back up and running on its battery, and we're up to about 20% on the battery. Seems to be charging fine. I do want to take a quick look around, like in the Joy-Con connectors, and just make sure there wasn't something shorting that blew that fuse before I stick my Joy-Cons on. This one looks to be fine, and this one looks to be fine as well. So I think it's okay to stick our Joy-Cons on there. Let's stick my Joy-Cons on, and make sure it is recognizing and charging both. And it is. Excellent. So I think we have solved the problem with a fuse replacement. This is such a rare happenstance with a switch. You can usually blow the entire charging circuitry and not blow the fuse. If you got value out of this video, I think you'll get value out of this one. Click on it, and I'll see you there.